Hey, it is Rob Liefeld, and I am here in my studio, finally ready to announce to you some of the most exciting news that I can share in 2024. And I'm telling you, when you see these, you will understand. Mac here. Welcome back to the show. So earlier this week, time of recording, Rob Liefeld and Loose Collector have officially announced their partnership, their collaboration in creating an action figure line based off of Rob Liefeld's Extreme Universe. If you don't know who Rob Liefeld is, I guarantee you at least know some of his work. He was very instrumental in the 90s, the early 90s to the mid 90s of helping to create the aesthetic of the 90s basically him and jim lee i feel really were the were the ones that like pushed this big muscles big guns big pouches big hair like everything was pushed to the next level everything was pushed to the extreme and that created this aesthetic that we associate with 90s comics especially teams like the x-men which is a team which is a title that rob was very hands-on with and very instrumental in helping to turn into what we know today. He was co-creator for a lot, a lot of uh, characters at the time. Mostly, I think he did what they looked like, their aesthetic, their look, their costumes, things like that. And what characters were those? None other than Deadpool. He also had a hand in helping to create Cable, Domino, Shatterstar, X-Force in general. I believe he also had something to do with Feral as well from X-Force, previously New Mutants, I think. Um, so he was very influential. His art style was very influential in the 90s and really still pushes things today. Now, Rob himself, because of his art style, can be a bit of a uh, controversial character. People seem to either really like him or really hate him. There doesn't seem to be any in between. When I say, okay, people seem to either really like his art style or really hate his art style. As a matter of fact, if you watch Atop the Fourth Wall, he calls Rob out in, <laughs> in his opening song, in his opening theme, <laughs> which I've always found kind of amusing. But I was very aware of Rob in the 90s because I was reading X-Men comics. That was when like I was really getting into comics that was when I branched out from DC and I started reading Marvel. And I was reading mostly the X-Men. Um, both X-Men titles, X-Factor, New Mutants that became X-Force. All of those. And, and, and all of the confusing history that went with it. Now, his Extreme Studios run, that is something that is his on his own. He formed this Extreme Studios studio when he left Marvel and he joined Todd McFarlane to start Image Comics. He was one of the founders of Image Comics. And when he created this Extreme Studios, because Marvel owned pretty much every character Rob worked on, the artists didn't get any kind of credit for their creations. That was the whole impetus of starting Image Comics, that the creators had control over the characters they created or helped to create. That when Rob started designing these new characters for teams like Bloodstrike, and I think Youngblood was another one that he did, there was very much this copy and paste mentality that he was taking the aesthetics, not necessarily the backstory, personality, or powers, but he was taking the aesthetics of these characters that he had worked on, and a few he hadn't, and was transferring them over to his universe, his extreme universe. Um, one of those that we're going to be taking a look at today is Kabat Stone right here, which this was the leader of Bloodstrike. And if you look at him, you, I could completely understand if you mistook him for Cable. But that is basically who Stone was based off of. And he was also a leader and he carried big guns. So you see what I mean? There's very much like, I created Cable, I don't have Cable anymore, I'm doing this. I can't really blame him, and he wasn't the only one that did that, but he, he was the one that did it the most, and I can't really blame him. Um, because actually, if you think about it, if you look at Spawn, especially in his early days, 
You could kind of argue that he was based off of Todd's work on Venom, but that's a story for another time. So Rob has also sort of, he never really left comics, but I feel like now his name is getting thrown around a lot. He, his presence is being felt more. It's sort of like a rob right now. Um, I just, I became aware, uh, I shouldn't say aware, but I became, I noticed his hand in modern comics a few years ago when he did a Snake Eyes miniseries for IDW. I have it. I think it was called Dead Game. That was where we got the red suit Snake Eyes from. So when Loose Collector and he went into this collaboration, I was wondering what characters he was going to use, which was going to be part of the first wave. Because as much as it kills me, he doesn't own Wildcats anymore. Wildcats is arguably his most popular property. But he sold the rights off to Wildcats, and I think DC owns it now. I'm not 100% certain on that, but I think DC owns it. So the first two we're going to be getting are based off of Bloodstrike. And one of them is Cabot Stone right here, or Cabot Stone right here. That's, I mean, if you just look at him, first of all, check out Rob's enthusiasm. But if you just look at him, this is a 3D representation of Rob's extreme vision from the 90s. I mean, he has the big guns, both Pew Pew and these. He has the big ponytail you can see coming out the back. He just has a big bulky build for the character. And I really feel like this is going to be a pretty decent representation of that character. I mean, he comes with three guns as well. One to hold, two to holster, which if that doesn't say extreme 90s, I don't know what does. And in this mock-up, this is obviously a test shot, but in this mock-up you can even see um, pouches. <laughs> you can't have 90s figures without pouches. Now, as far as who he's collaborating with, Loose Collector, let's just face it, Loose Collector has been killing it with the comic book characters lately, or the comic book figures lately, especially sort of like these, I don't want to say off-brand, but like these indie brand ones that they had coming out. Um, the Rocketeer, everything they're doing with Coffin Comics, and the Lady Death series, and Lamorta, which I have on pre-order. And then they just had that those other three come out that were kind of like serialized. You had like the the... Uh, the Rocket Man, and I forget who the other two were, but indie comics is kind of like in their wheelhouse right now, so it kind of totally makes sense to me that they would team up with Liefeld and get like maybe a more modern um, superhero going on, because they do have Lady Death, but that's not really like traditional superheroes, that's more like mystic stuff, uh, kind of like almost Justice League Dark, that kind of thing, if I was going to compare it to anything. This is just straight up, like, superheroes, superpowers, just crazy-looking guys. And speaking of crazy-looking guys, that is what brings us to our second figure of the first wave, Blood Wolf. And truthfully, I know nothing about Blood Wolf. Blood Wolf was after I got out of comics, I think. I, I only picked up a few issues, issues of Wildcats. I don't think I ever got Blood Strike. I don't think I ever got any of the other things that he did after he left Marvel. And I kind of feel bad about that, <laughs> especially for all the work he did on X-Men and like how much he shaped that and how much I really enjoyed what he was doing on that. But Blood Wolf here, this is what I mean by saying that like he modeled a lot of his characters not only off of stuff that he did, but also what was kind of popular and quote unquote extreme at the time. That if you look at Blood Wolf, he's an alien mercenary, totally different from an alien bounty hunter. But he's obviously like a, I don't know if parody is the right word, but like a, maybe a parody of Lobo from DC Comics. And I know for a fact he had nothing to do with the creation of Lobo or with the redesign of Lobo that happened in like the late 80s, early 90s when he became the main man. So these are the first two figures that we have going. And they, they are definitely going to have a look to them. And I think that's one of the things that's going to help this line and they and like maybe like push it a little bit more is that these are the sort of nothing like what we have on the shelf right now with that 90s aesthetic i mean we have x-men 97 coming out for like the animated series but those are basically just like the x-men with cell shading like there was a little bit of costume design difference just for the sake of animation instead of drawing stills but it's not this. 
Like, I, it, unless they came out with, like, another cable, it's not this. With the exception of maybe, like, that Forge character figure that came out a while ago. Don't collect Marvel Legends. Don't know how... Don't remember how long ago Forge came out. But I think with this being completely different from anything else Loose Collector is doing, and kind of different from anything that is on the shelf right now, I definitely think that's going to help push the, the line. I'm probably going to go in on the first wave, especially if it's just these two, because like I said, Liefeld really had a lot to do with comics in the 90s, which was when I was really enjoying comics in the 90s. And I know he doesn't need my money, but I kind of feel like I want to like back him on this just because I feel like it's his time. <laughs> I don't know, like, I have some sort of weird nostalgic connection to Rob Liefeld that I can't quite explain. One figure that I really hope comes out, he even mentioned her in this video, is Evangelion. I have no doubt that I always pronounce that wrong, but I really hope she comes out, if not as like a surprise figure for the first wave, then at least in the second wave. Pre-orders are going to go up next week, time of recording, so it will be sometime between, like, what is it? I think it'll be sometime between, like, the 19th and the 23rd of February. Pre-orders should start, so keep a lookout for that. More than likely, they'll be up on Big Bad Toy Store. So, we'll, uh, we'll check that out when it happens, and who knows, maybe I'll be back once we get a better look at these. So, until then, my friends. Oh, wait, please remember, do all the YouTube things. Like comment, subscribe, check me out on coffee. And now, until next time, my friends, play well, stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, thank you for watching.